it's just been a pleasure to work with him now over the last uh, more than a few years, Jonathan. I have to kind of go back all the way. <laughs> um, I think we certainly are, you know, certainly been uh, together in this project, and this is the second version of the of the report. Um, we first convened um, our, you know, our first panel um, in in. Uh, 2020, when we uh, released the first report, um, and uh, in 2021, um, which was a um, really uh, focus, uh, it was the inaugural report, um, and it's very interesting and insightful to actually take the step further and work on the second uh, report. The state of XR and immersive learning report is a culmination. Um, of the annual Delphi inspired environmental scanning and forecasting study that we do. Um, some of you uh, may be familiar with the well known horizon report series um, that were previously per, uh, published by the new media consortium. So we take inspiration for that. But for the second uh, state of XI and immersive learning report, we invited 40 educators, education leaders, researchers, technologists, and others who came together um, from different parts of the world. And that um, it was truly a global panel, and it was truly a panel that uh, exemplified just a variety um, uh, of um, competencies and a variety of expertise across the teaching and learning and ed educational um, context. Um, and each was invited to contribute their perspective on current and emerging trends um, and important developments um, on the research um, on act in, in terms of the use of extended reality, immersive learning, immersive technologies, um, and everything um, you know that actually is around that ecosystem. So uh, we, uh, for the second round, we also introduced the the working groups and the expert panel working groups actually focus on having the opportunity to have a synchronous a and a synchronous discussions and deliberate and uh, really conversation over the spring of 2022 and. Um, Really, that serve as a springboard to to produce the executive summary, um, and today to um, open the immersive learning showcase. Um, what you see here is the timeline uh, where we convene the expert panel, um, the expert panel forecasting working groups happening. Um, we we ho we held. Um, about 10 of those sessions uh, to accommodate multiple time zones and contributions. And then in addition to the 90 minutes asynchronous, asynchronous sessions, we also have um, additional time uh, over the next, the course of the next week and a half for asynchronous contribution for our panel. Um, and then uh, with that, at the end of April, the panels um, are, were able to vote on the um, on the preliminary list, which um, I happen to curate based on all these contributions. And as that, we actually were able to release the executive summary with the 18 topics. And each of our topics is in one of our research questions. And this is just um, the list of these 40 amazing uh, contributors to the report who truly come from across the world. A um, number of them from institutions within the US, UK, Australia, um, also Middle East, um, and um, the Caucasus, uh, and yes, uh, and um, some some just really a, a really a cross sections um, from um, experts working with immersive uh, technologies and immersive learning across the world. So. Um, yeah, we also the opportunity to have a synchronous, particularly synchronous sessions was really valuable. I think that we uh, all were able to share a great deal of our practice, of what we're seeing, of our observation, and on a global level, that was truly, um, really um, an important part of being a part of this community. And I think something that we took very direct feedback from our first uh, round of this report um, and um, in our inaugural report, and certainly we'll keep going forward. So um, 
some of you may be familiar with our framework, but our framework for the report follows three research questions. What are the most promising opportunities in learning day um, that uh, AXA and immersive technology can help fulfill? Um, and uh, as we work our way through the first um, research questions, these are the, the five, the six strengths that are identified. We identify in each uh, research um, question, six strengths. Um, that um, really illuminate where um, sort of where things are happening on the forefront, where things are happening that are, we are seeing them uh, really developing in the short term, um, the short um, term deadline. In particular, when we're looking at opportunity, those are uh, very much um, issues that um, we as educators um, and as um, explore, you know, as explorers of the, the new this new space. Um, a scene coming right at us. Um, so the second research question is the barriers, um, and that is the challenges we see. Um, it's not always a smooth sailing with these immersive um, tools, um, and, and, and particularly as we want to put them in the context of learning, and we want to really accomplish learning meaningful, purposeful use of these tools. We want to move away from just, you know, just being uh, a shiny toy, uh, and that's a, you know that's um, on the forefront and at top of mind. I think for most educators, of kind of moving away from just uh, and and embedding this into. I'm not sure this is moving, uh, Jonathan. Ah, I think finally it is. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so uh, in in our first uh, research questions is the opportunities. In our second questions, we focus on the challenges, um, and those are some of the challenges that we see. We continue to see, and we continue to actually think about, you know, how we can overcome them. And partly, our identifying them is actually we can join to um, you know our effort together. Uh, in uh, addressing them and such as challenges with privacy and ethics, which is, uh, I know, top of mind of many of us, accessibility, um, but also understanding that higher education is changing. And uh, across the world, we are thinking about how demographics, how um, the pace of change in technology and in industries um, across the spectrum is also asking us to change. So, um, Something like uh, structural challenges in high education was identified in, in this context. Um, and um, the way we're going to actually um, move um, to um, the, the immersive um, learning showcase in the moment is the way those are exemplified is by our visuals. Um, and which is a starting point of where we invite you um, in a moment to really um, it, uh, the showcase and think about how you're able to contribute going forward. So, the third question is catalyst, and catalyst for us are things that are about to to have an impact on uh, on immersive learning. Um, so, things developments that might be in technology, that might be in um, in applications, in the opportunity to leverage new tools, um, but oftentimes that signals the convergence of things. And I would be, you know, I'll be as I, you know, can probably mention for, um, I'm sure multiple times over the last couple of days, the convergence of AI and XR. Uh, in it's something, you know, incredibly powerful. We've been um, talking about, um, you know, uh, uh, having personalized learning, uh, the opportunity to engage with avatars. We have now generative AI, the opportunity to make these uh, spaces dynamic, responsive. At the same time, as this, this opportunity comes in, um, the challenges around ethics um, continue to, um, you know, I think, rise in terms of the question we should ask. But nonetheless, the, the, the expert report, or the expert panel has um, has was just uh, really thoughtful and in, in looking into like what are the the top of mind, what are the you know in identifying this, the top six categories out of the list. We start close to thirty individual trends um, that we are likely to see uh, most um, impact in in the years to come. 
So, um, and, and this is what you'll see exemplified in our visual immersive learning showcase tonight. Okay, so in addition to that, we look up, um, we also look into like kind of this tipping point um, when things are about um, to change or what, what is changing. And so at the, at this, in the kind of after the three research questions, we usually uh, survey, we have like a benchmark, a couple of other questions that we, um, we continue to take a benchmark because it gives us an opportunity to then look at uh, along our publications. Um, and so uh, it was very, very interesting to kind of look into how this is changing and, you know, where, um, where the tipping point is seen. And I think in this case is seen in, uh, in dipping and going up uh, and uh, with a significant rise in high in K through 12 education um, and then um, continues kind of um, continues and, you know, perhaps normalizing a bit in high education, uh, but also, um, you know, thinking about libraries, public libraries, um, museums and others, um, and how this is, um, and this is a dynamic graph, right? Um, and so um, you can see this in 2020 and you can see what happens in 2022 when we like take on, uh, everything was kind of starting to take, you know, to, to actually, you know, a much more significant and pronounced uh, rise. Another question, um, you know, another way to think about this question is, um, again, identifying when is this becoming, um, you know, part of everything we do, which in some institution is, and in some institutions um, is, is up and coming. We are uh, very, um, we are very diverse in a way we adapt these technologies. We don't walk in a, we're not in a locked pace. And so some institutions, um, you know, have started pioneering a little early. So their presence is more established. Their labs have more experience. Their teams are more experienced in moving forward. And the institutions that continue to invest in, uh, in terms of uh, bringing this to the teaching and learning uh, environment, to the curricula, to the extracurricular, to building their teams. And so this is a reflection. This is what this is a reflection on um, identifying, you know, like a, if we look more, um, you know, the representation of that and invite the panels to, um, the, the panel is kind of seeing this uh, in this range. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, and these are the final, uh, the final set of data that I want to share and refresh, um, um, sort of for everyone as we, as we move into the immersive, immersive, um, uh, showcase in a moment. So, um, this is, um, this is also like thinking about looking at our institutions and looking at what we see. Uh, in terms of, um, you know, moving, moving forward boldly into this world. Um, and that is really looking into um, no more just being an exploration, uh, but uh, really being a, a thoughtfully, you know, thoughtful way uh, of being embedded in the curriculum, in the teaching and learning environment. And majority of the panelists um, are very much researchers themselves. So they're very interested in um, something that is a hallmark for the immersive learning research network. They're very interested in, in seeing the evidence. Right? When this is not just a shallow, you know, being embedded in, in the context um, in the you know the teaching and learning context, but it actually ha can be measured, can be assessed, and we can know exactly what the impact is. So so moving moving in in that space, um, and so we see like a continuous um, rise in that. Um, so um, finally, I think that we were a little closer to to big events um, such as the global pandemic, but. I think these are, we see those as just, um, you know, as moments of influence on how we act as uh, educational institutions, um, as well as what motivates us and drive us. Um, and so we looked in 2022, you know, at the sort of the red is, is government policy, uh, purple is university or school policy, blue is, um, 
a really sort of a major business release um, in the context of the ecosystem, something that we can leverage like a hardware or software. And the green is a major social cultural shift or event like socioeconomic or in the way the pandemic happened. And you can see how much that was on uh, everybody's mind in 2020 and how little and how it has shrunk completely in, 20, in spring of 2022. Um, so as we kind of took that poll and um, in the, what we're seeing the rise of is the university's policy. And that is something like more the strategic effort in education of, of moving forward, um, uh, moving forward with OED's these initiatives. So, yes, yeah, so from, um, as I mentioned, the green, that sort of major social event, cultural shift. And now much more, and in, in, even in um, starting to look at the boo, which is much more the major release, something that in, in you know provides us new affordances um, to work with these tools, and then the purple, as you know, just a leadership, a very much an effort that is um, driven by the institution, the leadership, uh, strategic effort in in the context of. You know, how do we reimagine uh, ed the future of education and, and, and certainly um, XR and opportunities with the immersive learning space continues to be uh, of, of interest. Um, we uh, all want to have, you know, these kind of online or virtual learning environments to be um, immersive, to encourage the sense of presence uh, and the sense of agency and connectedness to our students. Um, and so, um, so this is, this is again, um, we asked these few questions at the end of the report in, in an effort to, again, look into that in the forecasting effort and in the context of uh, how um, um, being able to share. Uh, we know that the report is used as part of, um, as part of strategic planning, as part of uh, planning for um, innovate, you know, embedding innovation in the curriculum as part of, um, uh, as and as part is like just um, also understanding uh, the affordances of of XR um, in uh, education. So I can take a couple of questions if you want to have in the Zoom because after that we will jump off for the second part of our of our session today to the inaugural Immersive Learning Showcase uh, in Frame VR. Um, in the past, we hosted this, uh, this is um, the second or the third time we actually host uh, the, the, the showcase. We've hosted it in Vrbawa and uh, we've, um, uh, while we open and launch this space, this new space, we also hope to uh, in the future invite contributions from across the network to, um, to really be um, uh, providing exemplars and, and sharing their work and for us to be sharing their work with others. Um, so, and possibly, um, you know, we always ambition, ambitious in, in what we can uh, continue to provide a space for uh, conversation and um, um, discussion and provocation 